Okay, so in this video we're going to look at the laws of indices. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to where these are listed out in your log tables, okay? So if you go to indices and logarithms on page 21, we can see here down on the left hand side the list of the laws of indices, okay? So I'm going to refer to them uh, as they are in your log tables because this is what you're going to have with you in the exam, okay? So there are nine altogether. All right, now depending on your level, you don't need to be aware of all nine. I'm going to go through them as in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, so you'll know which one I'm referring to from the list in the log tables. Okay, so looking at the first one, the first one is written as 8 power of p, 8 power of q equals 8 power of p plus q. Now that's the way it's written. And what this means, because these two are side by side like this, it means they are multiplied, okay? So, okay, so this can be a little bit harder to maybe understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain each of these laws using lots of examples so you fully understand wh what exactly it is saying um, with each of these laws that are written in the log tables. Okay, so what this is saying is, let's take an example. If you had x squared, okay, and you are multiplying by x cubed, then you can simplify that to x to the power of 2 plus 3. You can add the powers. If you're multiplying the two terms and both terms are a power of x, okay, so you have x to the power of something times x to the power of something, then what you can do is you can add the powers, okay, so what we should be getting is x to the power of 5. Well, let's have a look in more detail and see if that is true. x squared, of course, is the same as x times x, isn't it? And x cubed is the same as x times x times x, yeah? So if we were to multiply these by these, we have x times x times x times x times x, and if you have five x's all being multiplied to each other, then yes, we can write it as x to the power of five. All right? So another little look would be, let's to do with uh, numbers. If you had two to the power of four, times 2 to the power of 7. If we wanted to write that as a power of 2, if you wanted to simplify it, we could write it as 2 to the power of 4 plus 7. So 2 to the power of 11. Okay? And obviously you can go ahead and evaluate 2 to the power of 11, but often in the question you just want to simplify the powers. Now one key thing to point out here is it has to be the same number that's being raised, okay? For any of these laws of indices to work, you have to have the same number being raised. That's why in the law that's in the log tables it has quite clearly an a to a power times an a to a power will give you a to the two powers added, okay? You couldn't have, for example, two to the power of four times five to the power of seven, okay? That won't work, all right? Because it's not the same number that's being raised. It has to be two to a power times two to another power, and if they are both powers of two and you're multiplying, then you can add the powers, okay? So that's the key thing. When it's multiplication, we can add the powers. And that's how we can simplify it. Okay, the second law as it appears in your list on page 21 of your log tables is written like this. When you have a to the power of p divided by, see so we've got a division sign here, a to the power of q, it is the same as a to the power of p minus q. Okay, so again, let's take a look because this can often be a little bit complicated. Let's take it in two examples so we can see a little bit clearer exactly what's going on. Let's say we have x to the power of 5 and we're dividing by x to the power of 3. Okay, what this law says it's the same as x to the power of 5 take away 3, which says it's the same as x to the power of 2. Well, let's see if that's true. 
x to the power of 5 is, of course, x times x times x times x times x. x multiplied by itself five times. And then if we're dividing by x cubed, that's the same as x times x times x. Then what have we got? Well, we have that x will divide into that x once, that x will divide into that x once, and that x will divide into that x once, and leave me, of course, with just an x times x. And of course, x times x is x squared. So that is how we are getting it. So in other words, when you are dividing with powers, when you have both of them being raised, you see the same thing as being raised. You have an x being raised here and an x being raised here. So that's how this law works. This is how we can simplify it. Well, if you're dividing, then what you can do is you can subtract the powers. Okay, let's take a numerical example of this. So uh, let's take uh, 2 to the power of 6 divided by 2 to the power of 2. Okay, and 2 to the power of 6 divided by 2 to the power of 2 is the same as 2 to the power of 6 minus 2, which of course is 2 to the power of 4. Okay, so when it's division, you subtract the powers. That's what the second law of indices says. Okay, the third law of indices, as it appears in your list on page 21, has that if you have a to the power of p, and then that's all being raised to the power of q, it is equal to a to the pq. Now, pq, when it's written like that, means, of course, uh, p times q. Okay, so that's another way of writing that. That's the way it appears in your log tables, but remember, pq written beside each other always implies times. So now, let's take a look at this uh, again in a clear example. Let's say you have... Um, x squared all to the power of 3. So x squared all raised to the power of 3. Now what this law is saying is, is that's going to be equal to x to the 2 times 3. And 2 times 3, of course, is 6, so it's equivalent to x to the power of 6. Well, let's see, shall we? x squared, another way of writing x squared, is x times x. Now, if you're cubing that, that means you're multiplying that by itself three times. So you'll have x by x times itself once, uh, x by x again twice, and times x by x again three times. You have x squared multiplied by itself three times. And of course, what are you left with? x times x times x times x times x times x, which of course is x multiplied by itself six times, which is x to the power of six. So that's where that's coming from. So what the law is saying is when you have a power to a power, you multiply the powers. Okay, so in other words, then a nice numerical example might be 2 to the power of 4 all to the power of 5 would be the same as 2 to the power of 4 times 5, which is 2 to the power of 20. Okay, the sixth law of indices that's written here in the log tables is explaining that if you have something being raised to a fraction, okay, so when the power is a fraction, then it's always equivalent to the root of a. Now, depending on what the denominator is, that tells you what root to take. So, let's jump straight into an example here. Let's say you have x to the power of a half. Okay, so straight away you spot that you've got a fraction immediately in your head, you should be remembering that it's going to be a root. And because it's a two on the denominator, that means it's going to be the square root of a. Okay, that's the way we uh, describe that. Now, the thing with square root is we don't tend to write the two for square root. We always just tend to write it as 
root a okay we don't tend to put the two there okay uh, however the minute that denominator becomes anything other than two we do put the root in okay it makes a huge difference let's jump straight to a numerical example here so we can kind of see uh, and evaluate exactly what's going on let's say you have four to the power of a half and we want to fully evaluate this okay we'll first write it as a power and then we'll fully evaluate it. So immediately, as we said, we've got a fraction, so we know it's got to be a root. It's a it's a the two as a denominator, which means it's going to be the square root of four. Okay, and again, we don't usually write square root with the two, we just tend to write a square root of four like that. Square root of four, of course, is two. So the answer to fourth power of a half is two. And you can always check that on the calculator, look. 4 to the power, and then in the power we're going to put the fraction 1 over 2, and it is of course 2. And that's because a power of a half is always a square root. Now that's really important to remember. Alright, a power of a half is always equal to the square root. That is a really common one that comes up. The power of a half okay and it's one that pupils uh, usually do trip up on so really learn that one off any power of a half is always equal to a square root